everyone. Welcome to Stuff I Never Learned on the School Book. My name is Tom Springer, and I am the owner of this show. Uh, it is a Thursday night, so we're doing a little offshoot of my normal Monday nights, as you see down below. Uh, if you're looking at the bearded one, that means it is 7 p.m. Central, 8 Eastern, 6 Mountain, 5 Pacific, 2 out in Hawaii, 6 a.m. tomorrow, all the way out in Indonesia, and 9 o'clock out in Australia. Welcome, everybody. If you have met me, Welcome back. Um, if you have not, my name is Tom Springer, and I am the host of the show. Stuart, how you doing, brother? I already see you popping in. Um, I am not going to beat around the bush. I'm just going to drag people in because I don't feel like talking tonight, and I know they got a lot to say. Um, anyways, uh, half the, a couple of these people you've met before. Um, three of them are going to be new to you as far as my show goes, but you probably already know who they are. So let's bring in Bill first. Hey, Bill, what's going on? Hey, how you doing? Good. And then we have Miss Heather. Hi, Heather. How are you? Good, and you? Good. And then we're bringing in Miss Connie for a repeat. Hi, Connie. Hi. And then we got Mr. Joe walking in. How you doing, Joe? Hey guys. How's, how's everybody? Good to see you. And then we have Mr. Chris. Chris, how you doing, brother? Doing great. Thanks for having us all here. Welcome to the show. Yeah, so um, tonight's show is really talking um, about Phantasm Orlando. Um, right off the bat, I'm just going to go ahead and bring this up. Uh, give me a second to do this, everybody um and share so phantasm orlando is going to be taking place the 15th to the 17th so coming up shortly here in september uh it's going to be over here at the double tree by hilton that's over by the universal orlando and um there's going to be a combination so there's a combination of horror as well as paranormal so there's actually a paranormal page out here you can click on and a list everybody that i have on my show tonight so you can learn a little bit about them uh, and you can go out there and kind of do a meet and greet before you get to them and go see them at their panels. So with that said, let me hide everything I just did. Welcome back. Um, so everybody, do me a favor. Bill, I'm going to start with you. You. <laughs> want, me, want me to start? Uh, and, um, oh, first, fair warning, you're being watched. Hi, bye. <laughs> um, a lot of people are popping to say hello already. So a little Miss, uh, little Miss Stephanie's out there. Hi, Steph. Uh, Ajang, the reason you guys hear me mention this girl right here, uh, Ajang actually watches us from Indonesia. So hello, Ajang. Uh, so she's out here. This is my wife saying hello to everybody. So she's hey, cool. Nikki. Um, and so yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and start with Bill. Bill, if you want to introduce yourself, kind of give people a rundown on who you are and a little bit about yourself, and then I'm just going to go around. I'm going to say I'm going to go around the room because that's kind of what this is, and uh, we'll go that way. Connie, you're going last. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I don't know why. Save the best for last, right? We're always last. <laughs> well, I'm Bill Slevin. I'm a paranormal investigator, researcher, educator, demonology specialist, parapsychologist. Um, I've been doing this for about 35 years, and uh, I'm a, one of the celebrity guests at uh, Phantasm. I'm also the head of the paranormal department for Phantasm to help bring all these people in to have a really uh, interesting paranormal show while we're there. Chris. Oh, there should be next. I cut it short. <laughs> it doesn't um, matter. You can go, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. We'll, we'll, we'll throw, this, we'll throw this around. All right. So, uh, my name is Chris McKinnell. I'm director of the Warren legacy foundation for paranormal research. Um, I, Happen to also be the grandson of Ed Lorraine Warren. So I've got some information about the horror films that everybody likes. Uh, <laughs> but my focus is on helping people, and that's what the foundation does all around the world. And uh, looking forward to coming there. I'm going to be flying up from Paraguay, which is where I am right now. If you hear thunder, that's me. <laughs> I mean, no, it's, thunder, it's outside. Not, not <laughs> my belly. I say, not my belly. No, nope, not me. I ate. So, <laughs> so uh, Heather, let's go on to you. Okay. Yeah, um, my name's Heather Lee. I uh, actually been in the paranormal field coming up on 35 years. I can't believe how time is flying is flying by. Um, I'm an author, lecturer, um, motivational coach, podcast um, host. I host three different podcasts. One, of course, with Joe, and. Um, just I do this to help educate other people and uh, eliminate the fear that people have. And I know that's why we all are in this to try to eliminate the fear. And um, 
here in Southwest Florida. So definitely looking forward to working with Bill sometime in the future, one-on-one -on -one, instead of <laughs> just via the computer. Say another yeah, right. because you're down here too. Another Floridian man, we got all over the place. So, <laughs> Joe, you're up, brother. Well, thank you uh, for having me on. Uh, my name Absolutely. is Joe Frankie. Uh, I have been involved in the paranormal uh, for 37 years now. I joined the Warrens uh, when I was 18 years old, back in 1986, uh, and have been doing it ever since. Um, and, you know, as Heather mentioned, my main focus is twofold. It's to help people, number one, with their paranormal afflictions, uh, and also to educate educate the public, uh, educate um, the <laughs> upcoming would-be, you know, researchers. Uh, you know, I, I've dealt with a lot of paranormal activity, um, demonologists, I'm a lecturer, I lecture at colleges, universities, public forums, uh, private fundraisers, just to try and educate people on the true um, true paranormal cases, not, not a lot of the hype and stuff you see on television. You know? Right. Yep. Exactly. Happy to do it. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Connie, now you need to know why I saved you for last. I saved you for last because you're my favorite. So that's why I saved you for last. So. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, um, I am a clinical, interpersonal, and transpersonal hypnotherapist. I do a lot of past life regression work. I'm a psychic medium. I'm an Usui and Karuna Reiki master. I am an Incan Peruvian full mesa carrier shaman. Well, I'm not Peruvian, but I'm trained in the Incan Peruvian lineage of the Caro. Um, I am the owner of Sacred Space Spiritual Center here in Brandon, Florida, and I do healing sessions remotely for people as well as in person. I am the team lead for the Paranormal Existence Research Society, which is Bill's team, and I'm over on the West Coast. Bill is on the East Coast. Uh, I am a member of the Warren Legacy Foundation for Paranormal Research. I am the co-owner co of Sinister Soul Clothing, which is launching now. Great. I will be at Hell House this weekend doing an appearance um, and doing readings and stuff. And I am coming to the Paracon next weekend in Orlando Phantasm. And I'm so excited to see everybody meet people. We're doing all kinds of panels and I cannot wait. I'm doing, I think I'm doing three aside from what I'm doing with Warren Legacy and, <laughs> and purse. So it's going to be a pretty busy weekend. So no uh, sleep for you. No sleep for you is what I'm No, oh. no. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, again, thank you all for coming on. Um, I, I greatly appreciate it. Last week, I did have on the other half or the other side of the um, Phantasm Orlando, which was the horror and shock film side of the house. And this and this time, Bill wanted to bring on the paranormal side to let him know that you guys are you guys are there as well. It's not just the horror and shock, which we talked about a little bit, and um, we talked about how you two kind of tie in together. Uh, there's a lot of stuff from the horror and shock side of the house that. Uh, has either come from paranormal or vice versa. Some people have seen the movies or whatever else uh, or the horror films, whatever they are. And then all of a sudden they think that it ties into paranormal or it comes from the paranormal side. So they really do tie in together. So having both of you at the um, Phantasm Orlando is a perfect combination for, for people who don't understand that. Um, go check it out. Uh, it's, it's really a good place. And again, I'm going to throw, so I'm going to throw this up. Here is the official link. Like I said, everybody that just introduced themselves is out on here under a paranormal banner. And I am going to post this into my comment section. So anyone who is watching this and wants to find out more information can go back into the comment section and pull this address so they can go and take a look at it. Okay. So, um, Bill, you're the one kind of, you're the one who, who, wanted me to try to herd this cat. So uh, <laughs> you can go ahead and, and uh, start doing a little introduction about what's going to be going on, what's going to be taking place, all that wonderful stuff, if you would. Sure. So um, everyone here is is a guest at Phantasm. So we'll all have our, our booths all weekend. We'll be there to talk to everybody. And if you've ever come and seen me before, I'll have all my equipment and everything set up. Um, 
Oh, and, the uh, equipment. <laughs> all the equipment. Hundreds of pieces. Hundreds <laughs> of pieces. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, hey, you know what? A lot of people love to see it because they've only seen it on TV. And some of them don't even realize some of that stuff is actually real devices. It, it, they, they're amazed sometimes to see it in front of them, you know. You know, um, you know what a lot of people don't know, Bill? Why? Is that 80% of that equipment is to detect orbs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but what they really don't know is. 90% of it I don't use in a person's home. <laughs> Only on public stuff. But yeah, no. Yeah, Unless we have there's orbs. vampires. If there's vampires, you know. <laughs> True. <laughs> then, then awesome. Awesome. Then everything's on the table at that point. So We have orb orb finding equipment. <laughs> and, uh, orb detectors. And, yes. And orb, orb protection. <laughs> um, so <laughs> it's funny that it's always right here handy. Um, <laughs> Kelly says she sees orbs floating all around you right now. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, wait. I would like to. Br I would like to bring something up about that real quick. If okay. if any of you guys did not see this, this was one of the funniest things so far. So you all know these groups I'm in on Facebook, and you know deal with people with the orbs and all that. So in the one group, I, I think it's uh, hauntings, <laughs> hauntings. Well, what is it? Hauntings, paranormal. I forget. It's the worst one out there. Like the yep. people are, you know, and I'm fine with people coming in and, and asking questions, but no one wants to accept answers. So I went in and now they all know me. So they know what I'm talking about. They know what I'm saying. And no, he's going to start. And I was say, Jeff, I, that's a no, you don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> there's, there's too many people on him here on here for him to start with. So um, I, I was at the uh, Rob Zombie Alice Cooper concert. So I had a picture of Alice Cooper and he had a bubble machine going. So the whole place was filled. And I posted this up on the site and I put, I was at the Alice Cooper concert last night and look at all the orbs. And you should have seen the shit show this started on that thing. Seriously. It was like, I mean, a lot of people were laughing and knew it was a joke, but there were people that were serious. I mean, there was people that were believing it. There was people saying it was his, his pet guests that are, you know, uh, fans that have died. Um, I mean, it was insane. People They're yelling at like me. Furious with him for posting it. <laughs> right. <laughs> How dare you post this and make a mockery. Like <laughs> Thank you. That's it. Okay. I, I would say it was about two hours, and it had over two hundred comments. It was hilarious. It was it was insane. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was it was great. It was <laughs> so yeah, we 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 deal with a lot oh, of that. Yeah, but that um, there'll be no orbs at Phantasm. But uh, <laughs> hey, but we we have a we have we have uh, conf we have confirmation right there. She was I saw there. All the orbs of the concert. So <laughs> she was with me. <laughs> She was recovering after ministry. <laughs> that was oh a little God. much for her. <laughs> ministry was a little much. Not um, her thing. <laughs> but uh, at Phantasm, like I said, we're all going to be at our booths. We, we have, uh, you know, we come talk to everybody. We got If you have questions, whatever. We're also going to have panels all weekend. Um, if you go to the website and actually go into the guest page and click on any one of our names, you'll then pop up and you'll see a thing underneath that shows every panel that we have and the times and the days and everything. We have everything from, uh, you know, me and, and my team talking about what a real paranormal investigator does and what we do as a team um, and teaching a little bit, showing some evidence. We have Chris and Joe talking about the Warrens and uh, about uh, uh, the Conjuring movies and the Nun and just about everything conjuring universe and you know oh, a lot of their stories and experiences heather's going to be talking she has a ton of panels or really some really cool panels i'll let you in a minute tell all your panels <laughs> no uh, same thing with connie i remembered yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like looking at my panels now yeah. <laughs> she's same thing I with connie. Connie typing she's like i'm good hold on <laughs> She's like, some of my last again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, some of my other team members will be there, um, I think, on Saturday, maybe throughout the week also. That'll be part of uh, some of the panels. We also have on Saturday and Sunday, we have uh, a, just a pure question and answer panel. Anything that has to do with paranormal, the Warrens, uh, the Heather's books, Connie's 
a million, you know, titles, whatever, <laughs> whatever we want to ask about. We'll, we'll, all of us will be in there. Everybody paranormal will be on those panels to answer, you know, every question. That is awesome. No. Well, now you got to, now you got to help us out, Heather. He put us in suspense. We want to know what you're, what you're bringing to the game. <laughs> um, well, oh, let me put my list here. She put yeah, a glass It's getting serious now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Friday, I'm doing a uh, presentation and panel discussion, uh, not panel, it's just me, um, on the history of witches and witchcraft. Oh, cool. um, 5 p.m., my son and I are doing a, a presentation on horror story origins, which talks about how um, all the horror, different horror stories have true life ties. Then Saturday, I'm doing herbal magic and the paranormal, as well as during that, I'm going to teach how to make a home protection kit. And then I'll have the ingredients to make that kit at my table for sale. Um, 1, p uh, 1 p.m. Saturday, I'm doing Haunted Florida Lighthouses because my new book comes out Monday, and that's the title of the book. Um, 5 p.m. on Saturday, Joe and I are doing a panel discussion on to Ouija or not to Ouija. Um, <laughs> and then I have Sunday Behind the Shadows, which talks about the hat man, men in black, and shadow people. And then um, Legends of Historic and Modern Day Vampires I'll be doing with my son. Heather, what's the name of your book again? Uh, Haunted Florida Lighthouses. Yeah. And that's the third book in the series. Hmm. Oh, perfect timing. It comes out Monday? Monday. Yep. Oh, that's good. Last year, yeah. her first <laughs> came book out came out like the day after Phantasm. <laughs> yep. Oh, my gosh. Yep. But this year, I'll have all three of the books with me. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Sorry. I'm just typing right now. So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm putting that out there so that way people know. I'm, I'm also posting that in the comments so people know okay. that they can go out there and take a look for that. Okay. So, perfect. Thank you. Perfect. You're welcome. <laughs> so, Chris, you want to talk about what you're going to talk about? You're going to talk about Bill, huh? You're going to talk about Bill. Well, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm going to be doing the question and answers. I hope <laughs> to address, uh, you know, I have lived in over 90 places around the world, so I want to address how hauntings take place around the world, how they manifest. We'll get into that, I'm sure, in the question and answers uh, uh, panels that we're going to be doing. Uh, of course, we're going to be delving into the true stories behind The Conjuring, The Nun, Annabelle. You know, I have obviously intimate knowledge of that. I have started going on interview or lecture tours with my grandparents back in 78 and started working with them back in 1980, 43 years ago. Huh. So uh, I've been at this my entire life. I born into it. And really looking forward to sharing what we, what I know and what I think, what I, what I've learned. And like Heather said, you know, I want to help minimize fear. I want to help. I mean, yeah, of course, we're going to tell those stories. We're going to tell some horrifying stories that are very true. I'm mm -hmm. not, I would never embellish or anything. But I also want to let you see the realities of things and help you deal with your fears. And uh, if you need help, that's also why we're there. Yeah. yeah. Last year, I don't want to mention the name because it's it's personal with somebody. But let me tell you, some of these panels uh, turned pretty personal. We had a very interesting experience during a, one of our panels last year with somebody that came forward, and it was a it was a very it was a very interesting, very interesting panel. It went from a fun panel to a very serious thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, that worked out really well. So there were a lot of opportunities to help people that we, yeah. Look, that's the part other than, you know, getting to see all these absolutely fantastic people again. Um, that's something I'm really looking forward to. So, and then I'll be in Brazil in uh, the end of October for another Paracon in uh, early November. Oh, very cool. I got a question um, for you, though, like right now. Mm -hmm. Chris, I got a question for you right now. Um, sure. Movie coming out, none too. Do you have anything tied to that? Are you any part of that at all? Or is Not that at all. No, nope. oh. and I can tell you the nun doesn't exist. Uh, <laughs> the only thing that exists from the nun is a character in the first movie called Frenchie. He is Maurice Thuriel. He was real, and that was one of my cases. Matter of fact, my grandfather had a heart attack during that exorcism. Oh, okay. And forgive me, the kittens here... Uh, I know, it's like, who's kittens? There's, yeah, there's, there's animals all over this panel right now. I, just I thought it was mine outside the door. I was I about to go. <laughs> no, they're, they're, this, 
This I one wants my attention. Too. Excuse me a moment. Yeah, that's all right. Chris. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff's calling you out. He said the nun absolutely exists. So. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Yeah. You know, here's the, the, the nun is a, a slender a man. We know, huh? The slender man we know was an internet uh, invention, and right. yet it has manifested. Yeah. And we will get into that because there is a good possibility the nun will eventually exist. Yeah, right? if, if there's enough, uh, if there's enough force behind it, manifestations happen. Based and off that's not scary to think about at all. No, no, not at all. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, Joe. What you bringing to the table, brother? What you got? Uh, I'm just there to watch Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going well, to every one of his panels. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to the panels, and uh, I'm not quite certain how many I'm on. I know Heather <laughs> threw my name in a couple I don't know about. but <laughs> You've been added you know, in. Well, one of the ones we're going to talk about is Ouija boards. I'm sure we're going to talk about other divination practices as well, because that's one subject that I lecture on. Um, you know, I was... I come from a Roman Catholic background, so, you know, I always say to my audience, look, there are many, many religions out there, and I respect all of them. I mean, not everyone's going to share my views, or they might have, you know, different takes on them, but I can only lecture as to what I know. Mm -hmm. I was born and raised Roman Catholic. Uh, when I began working with Ed and Lorraine, uh, I was a young man. I was 18. I was a teenager. Um, and what I learned from them, because they shared the Roman Catholic religion, was the Roman Catholic way, the way to look at demonology and demons and the hierarchy and, and uh, divination practices, which I firmly believe is really against the first commandment. You know, thou shalt not have any false gods before me. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a form of necromancy. Um, and so we're going to have a lively discussion, I'm sure. Uh, now, I'm not saying that if you've ever used the Ouija board or one of these things, you're going to have problems. But if you are in a state where you're uh, you know, depressed or your uh, substance abuse or, you know, even into, if you're into things like pornography, I mean, you could be targeted, um, you know, and this is just a gateway or a doorway to these things coming into your life. You're letting things in. You may have the intention of speaking to a past loved one, but there are forces out there that will use this to sneak in because, okay, they just gave me permission of your own free will you know, and, and these, these devices, you know, crystals, tarot cards, there's, there's all kinds of divination practices. So right. that's going to be a great discussion. And, and Heather and I are really looking forward to that. Um, mm -hmm. I know I'm in like, on the questions and answers. Um, I know uh, uh, there'll be a lot of uh, questions about the Warrens. I love to talk about my history with the Warrens. Um, you know, Chris and I are very close. We've known each other a long time. Uh, I spent a lot of time with them when I was a younger man and learned a lot. Uh, I remember one of the cases that Chris actually worked on in Connecticut um, was on about 15 minutes from me here where I live. And I remember the entering in the Connecticut case? What's that? The haunting in Connecticut case? Yes. The haunting in Connecticut, Southington, Connecticut. And I remember Ed's like, yeah, Joe, this is up there where you live, but you're not ready for that yet. Because you know, that <laughs> happened, what, around 80, they moved in in 86, and they moved out in 88, I think, Chris, if I remember correctly. And no, so that was about the time that so. I joined. Uh, I came and, back from Africa in 88, and yeah. I was in there 88, 89, somewhere like that. Yeah. So um, that was a pretty substantial case. And um, I do, when I lecture, I've added that case into my lecture series this year because I do a lot of, I live in Connecticut, and I get a lot of people, a lot of um, venues in Connecticut that I, I talk about, and people want to hear about the local stories. Right. You know, of course, I also talk about, um, you know, uh, Annabelle, um, uh, uh, Amityville, uh, some of the, the Conjuring, the cases the Conjuring movies are based on. I mean, I talk about what I've learned from the Warrens because I wasn't involved in them personally. I had one person say, wow, that's cool. You were at Amityville? I'm like, no, I was like six years old at the time. <laughs> <laughs> right. you know, I don't think they would let me in. Yeah. But, um, you know, all, all the true stuff. Um, you know, and obviously when things are made into a movie and Chris and I talk about this all the time, if you just told the story, the way it really happened, it's far more interesting and probably far more frightening than the yeah. liberties that Hollywood takes with these stories with the blood and gore and everything. And that's not what it's all about. Yeah. You know, Eddie used to always say, um, 
you know, face your fears. You know, I tell people, look, I'm not going to come in with a proton pack on my back and <laughs> suck this thing up and take it home and stick it in my ecto chamber. That's TV. That's Hollywood. Yeah. That's not how it works. But the Ghostbusters will be there this week. Uh, I, I love those guys. I can't wait. I wanna, <laughs> I they're always them. there. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> so not um, not, not uh, Bill Murray and those guys, but yeah, no. <laughs> You know, just unfortunately, um, <laughs> but you know, we just want to. I want to try to educate people on the way to perform a real paranormal investigation based on our experience. Now, we we all have about the same years of experience, so we share a lot of those same uh, values and beliefs, right? Uh, as far as investigating goes, um, I, there's I a like lot of the... thrill seekers out there. I got that, all you young whippersnappers beat. Cut it out. But yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. I like I like how they were like, Joe, you're not ready for this. Chris, get in there. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> you go. And I started at more. 16. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they didn't mind losing me. They were more worried about losing Joe. Yeah, well, no. I mean, I, I honestly was not ready. I had just I had just started studying with them and um, I would have loved to have gone for the experience, but you know, Ed said you, you're not ready, and he was right. You know, he was right. Yeah, still not ready, Miss Connie. <laughs> Miss Connie, what are you doing? Are you just are you just are you just gonna hand out snow cones? Is that what you're doing? I'm frozen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm just going to I'm just going to stand there and greet people. No, um, so. I am going to talk about entity attachments at 6 p.m. on Friday. Um, and I really have a lot to say about entity attachments, including my own. <laughs> um, Saturday, I am doing The Paranormal Adventures of Connie and Jerry at 3 p.m. Jerry Holt, she is my best friend, my non-evil sidekick and she and i go on paranormal adventures together and she's also uh part of pers and warren legacy foundation so we're going to be talking about some investigations that we've done and share some evidence and funny things that have happened and things like that Jeff Sunday, wants to know if you're doll. no don't bring that doll <laughs> yeah jeff wants to know if you're bringing the doll yeah i am Oh, God. Yeah. And you know what? I should, in fact, do a whole entire panel on her, given the recent events that have happened. Like, seriously. There's, there's some open slots. I could give you one. <laughs> I may have to because um, it's pretty it's pretty intense, like the things that just happened. So uh, oh, I, I was going to bring her with me. I was going to bring her with me tomorrow um, when I travel to Pennsylvania, but I'm in all honesty, like afraid that something will happen mm. if I bring her like, and I'm not even joking, like the plane will crash and I'll be the only survivor. So I am not bringing her <laughs> on the airplane. Like I am not joking. So I don't feel she's malicious, but <laughs> yeah. Um, At least yeah. if you bring her, be very careful. Yeah. There, there's some, there's just been some interesting things that have happened. Um, so she's she's very protective of me. Sunday, yes. I'm doing yes. hypnotherapy, past life regressions and alien abductions and stuff like that. I am going to have the doll at the table. I'm going to be doing some shamanic stone readings at the table as well, which I really like to do. And it's very interesting. It's a, a different way to do readings. Um, and I have some jewelry and fun things to sell. And so... I'm really looking forward to coming out and hanging out with everybody. You know, I, I get to talk to Bill all the time. I don't get to see everybody else as often. And Chris, I haven't seen you in like a year, you know, <laughs> so it'll be really nice. And, and, you know, I really want to uh, have my little bonding experiences again. I got, I got COVID last time after, afterwards so hopefully that <laughs> won't happen again <laughs> yeah. me, so hey, not, maybe. might crash the plane it's not like she'd be like i want the plane to go down but it's more like i don't want her to go because i want to make sure that she's going to be safe and nothing bad is going to happen to her so i'm going to take the plane down 
So that's the way of thinking. <laughs> well, no, you know, it would be great is if you brought that doll on that plane and that other lady happened to be on that plane. Right. right. <laughs> so like, that's oh, no, that that in the back. <laughs> oh, that would be a story. <laughs> I know. I know. So, I am happy to hear about all the panels because for, for those people who don't know that are on that are in my panel right now on my show, uh, my show is actually created to help people learn about their abilities, about paranormal, about all that wonderful stuff, because I am very new to my awakening, about a year and a half into it. Um, so this was created to have people help explain stuff. So I'm really happy you guys are on here, and I'm happy that's what you're doing uh, for your panels, for a lot of them. Uh, that way people would be able to ask questions, like you're going to have their bill with everybody on the, everybody here is going to be on the panel answering yeah. questions. I think that's very important. Uh, a lot of people don't understand how some of us, Huh? Um, don't really know where to go to ask questions like that. So it's good that that if anyone's watching this, share that information out. Um, yeah. Let well, them you know. know that if I might, actually, sure. we have a resource for you in the foundation on our Facebook uh, account. We have two psychic support groups that help people who are dealing with their abilities, and either they are trying to help them to grow or learn how to suppress them or how to deal with their anxiety and panic disorders or how to protect yourself. So we've got over a thousand members, both in English and in Spanish. Oh, nice. groups. Um, just reach out to us, any one of us, and we'll be happy to help you get into those groups. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, my wife is saying, yeah, she's, she's intrigued by the stone readings, Connie. <laughs> Me so, too, actually. I, I am too. And that's a lot of it is just simply because I, have a uh, indigenous person background. So, and I really feel, I, I almost feel like shamanism is where I'm supposed to be going with mine, where my pull is, but um, I may have to talk to you about this later. I just don't know how to go about starting. Um, so that may be something else I reach out to you for, Connie. Uh, yeah. And and Jeff has the best information so far. He goes, just go to Discovery Plus for good advice. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm on Discovery Plus. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> what are you saying? You, don't, you may not want to admit that. <laughs> or go to the hauntings of whatever group the you know where the orb pictures are and just ask for advice there because they right. will give you Solid advice. Out, yes. Out. Yeah, kind of, uh, Netflix is about to do a documentary that I'm in about the Conjuring Free case. It'll come out in October. Oh. I wish I could tell you the name of it, but I, I, <laughs> I mean, it. I have no idea what the name of it is, though. <laughs> like they, they're still working on the title. Okay. Oh, it, I, we have the information. I just can't be bothered to remember. <laughs> yeah. I just just hey. look for that. For me, he's down there. So just look for that face down there. So that's that's what you're looking for. <laughs> Netflix, you know, it's, it's on Netflix. Right? Yeah, well, all the shows are like that. I didn't know. I filmed that thing two and a half years before it released. I didn't know a title. I didn't know if it was coming out. It was Ken that posted a picture of me uh, on the show. And I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah, to know. Wearing the shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did have my shirt on. So Stuart is saying he wished that you all would come out to Texas. And my wife is saying she wished you all would find a way to come out to Nebraska because that's where we're at. Um, well, you guys have time to get a flight for next week, just saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's easy for a school teacher and someone who works for the government. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff is asking, isn't it the devil on trial? Yeah, you know, that's what I was thinking it was, too, the devil on trial. Yeah. Um, well, that would be the Conjuring 3. Exactly. Okay, yeah. I thought you said Conjuring too. I could have missed. <laughs> no, no, so. great. Two okay, well, is the Brazilian Enfield, which are not connected at all, and were yeah. far worse than anything they show in those movies. And we'll be talking about those on our panel. Yeah. I got two questions for you. One's going to tie into the other one. One is: Has everybody here, all five of you, um, had to deal with an exorcism, one form or another? I'm no? an exorcist. Well, I know you are, but I just, I, is, is everybody here? So Heather's shaking her head no. Nope. Um, okay. So for those who have, I have a very relative or just generic question that hopefully you will be able to answer. Um, a lot of the shows, they talk about house exorcisms versus people exorcisms. What is what? We're gonna have some. We're gonna have some headbutting on this one. I know. I see Chris shaking his head already. But I've been. I've been part of a bunch. I've been part of a bunch of 
exorcisms they did on the house where they came in and did the minor rite of exorcism in the home. And it's actually some of the most craziest things I've encountered in my life. I mean, again, I don't know if it was really attached to anybody there. They weren't doing it specific on somebody there, but I've been part of, of that. So I know Chris is going <laughs> to say differently. And this, this is all right, but he's been doing a lot longer. <laughs> I'm just going to say it, by the way they talk about it, how they label it, they say that only people are, have, are exercised, that houses are cleansed, that things are broken from them. Um, you can have a lay person go in and do it. There are rights for that as well. Um, you don't have to be clergy, but I do want to emphasize this is incredible, especially with people. It's incredibly rare. Possession is not normal. It isn't something that happens every day or even every year. I've been doing this 43 years and I've either participated in or actually led probably a dozen exorcisms. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, for years. and talking to Bill, um, mm. you know, we, we talked about spirit versus demon versus, you know, whatever. And he's like, look, he goes, people who think that they're being visited by a demon are wrong. It's like 1% of 1% of 1% might be a demon. <laughs> so yeah. uh, the rarity is 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 minute. Uh, so I'm an exorcist who doesn't believe in demons. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I think that they are something else uh, because I've seen the manifestations around the world and they are not Christian. They're not Hindu. They are not Buddhist. They are not anything that people think they are. And I, I think they're manifestations that come from us that take on a life of their own and can be deadly. They are deadly. Right. But they are not fallen angels as far as I can see. I cannot see any evidence of wisdom of the ages. Sometimes they can speak other languages. Sometimes they can have knowledge, foreknowledge, uh, a lot of it. But they follow the same old tropes over and over and over again. They don't They don't innovate. If they, if they were truly something ageless and wise they would learn to use their abilities far better than the ways that they keep going about it right come come to our panels and we'll argue with each other <laughs> right? right and you'll be more confused when you leave no. Stephanie's <laughs> stating i heard a well-known someone say that each time they have done an exorcism there have been multiple demons never just one so um could so in, in in that same thought process though, Chris, could there be multiple manifestations that the person has created that is causing this issue rather than absolutely, just absolutely, it is possible, and it it certainly has happened. Um, David Glotzel had thirty six, I believe. No, okay, yeah. So <laughs> absolutely, um, disassociative personality disorder can manifest externally into spirits that form that are called egregores or pulpas, um, self-manifestation of spirit. And they can take on a life of their own and be deadly. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So for, yeah, I've also dealt on cases that only had one. For those people who came in late, welcome to the show. Um, but you're wanting to know where Bill's talking about, hey, we'll come to the come talk about the panel. This is what we're talking about. So the show today really is to, to, to advertise the Phantasm Orlando. Uh, what the people I have on here is actually the paranormal group that's going to be at the Phantasm Orlando. And they are going to be holding multiple panels. They'll all have their own little setups and everything else. So you can come and talk to them directly. Uh, don't be shy. Don't be afraid. That's what they're there for is to talk to and gain knowledge from. Um, so feel free to come talk to them. Say hi. Let them know your interests. I'm sure that uh, Bill will be more than happy to let you know um, what every single one of his piece of equipment stands for and how much they help orbs, uh, identify orbs. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm just going to keep going on that, Bill, just because I, I know. Everybody does. Bring your right. orb pictures to Bill so that yes. he can see yeah. them. And you notice that he wants them so badly that he actually gave you an email address or a, an address right there. <laughs> Bill7.com. It's actually right there on his site. So, <laughs> and but I will say we do we we are real good with everybody coming up to the booth. Yes. I've had people come up and literally hang out there for a long time, just talking to us, asking questions, and showing us their pictures. And I am totally open to you coming up 
and bringing me your stuff and wanting me to look at it, but just be prepared for what I might say. You might not like it. <laughs> yeah, just just know that um, I do not believe. I mean, I I don't know everybody on this panel, but I pick up on things pretty quickly. Um, and I believe that none of these people are going to sugarcoat. Um, it's going to be <laughs> blunt, straight to the point. If you ask a question, whether it is correct or it is incorrect, you will get a swift and solid answer. So yeah, <laughs> we would be doing a disservice if we told you that something was legitimate that wasn't. That's right. not the whole point of this. And that's a big problem in the field is miseducation and people who keep spreading things around and they don't want to learn and listen. I don't know everything. None of us know everything. And mm -mm. I want right. to learn. And, and you know, I change my mind on so many things. And I'm like, change my mind, please. Change my mind. Right. I want to my mind to be changed. I want to grow and I want to learn. But if you're showing me a picture of freaking dust and telling me that that's the face of your grandmother, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to tell you the truth. <laughs> so the question came up from Brandy who's asked, how, how hard is it to see the difference between an orb or just dust? Okay, I I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Bill's got this one. I'm pointing at you, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got this. Okay. Go on the internet and everything you see is dust. No. Um, <laughs> hey, no, that's not fair. It could be a mall. <laughs> could, yeah, a mall. Yeah, yeah. could be a bug. It could Raindrops. Be <laughs> that's, that's the thing. 99.9% um, .9 of what you see on people's ring cameras um, and, and infrared cameras and all that is not orbs because a true orb is believed to be a spirit trying to manifest itself by pulling the energy from the room in 35 years and six, 700, who knows how many cases I've done now. I've seen three in my lifetime. I know people who have been doing this for more than that and have never seen any. They are solid 3D balls of energy that actually omit their own light. So you have to think of it like this. If you have your little ring camera on or, or your, you know, your security camera in your living room and it's at night and it's in night vision and a real orb came into that room, it would actually trick your camera into thinking it was daylight and it would switch out of night vision because it would be like you turned an actual light on in the room. It would be, so, it would, it's going to be big. It's not going to be like this. Tiny, yeah. The, it's, it's not transparent. They're no. not translucent. They've you know, got they don't tails have, and trails as they yeah. move. They move they don't very purposefully. I've watched them take corners mm -hmm. <laughs> and go into yeah. a wall. So but the I've first seen one insects do that on camera with digital camera, and you see the fluttering motion that it looked it, it the line of light keeps but growing zigzaggy. and growing and shrinking. Yeah, and it's an insect. The, that's the thing. The cameras, uh, most of those cameras are fixed focal lens cameras. So they cannot focus close up to the lens. So when a, a, a bug or a piece of dust or, or, or pollen or dander or hair or, I mean, there's so many different things that are flying around a house. They are little specks that you can't see with your eyes. A real orb you'll see with your eyes. When they get close to the camera, the camera can't focus on it. So it makes it blurry. It makes it transparent. And the infrared light bounces off of it, makes it glow and makes it look way bigger than it is. And that's why your camera will be tricked into motion saying you have a person there because it doesn't understand because it sees something really big, high up in the air, you know, so it, it thinks it's a person. Right. So, I mean, those are the main things. I mean, it's, it's something you will see with your eyes. I don't know anybody personally that has ever captured one on, on film. Where I was, in, in the ones that I saw, first of all, they happen when you're not expecting it. <laughs> and actually, in, in one, the first one I saw was on a demonic case, and it was during the minor rite of exorcism. And uh, it actually, you can feel the energy being pulled out of the room. You could feel your hair standing up. It was really, really, really crazy. We watched it grow, you know, grow from about this big to about the size of a softball. Mm. And... Um, it drained everything, every camera, the lights were flick. It pulled everything out of that room. It could to get to that size. So it, the thing is when people really see one, 
then they'll understand what well, I've been saying. Packs so. of them, like when you see all this, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, all of the soldiers yeah. on the battlefield." Or, <laughs> they don't like, travel in herds. <laughs> <laughs> you have to look at it this way: if they're pulling energy from the room and they're pulling all that energy to get something that big, how in the world do you think there's four hundred of them? <laughs> there's not enough right. energy in that room to do that, and they, they really they're not transparent. You know, and there are people out there. Somebody. I won't say a name, but somebody we were battling with the other day that says she can <laughs> prove that she can summon orbs and stuff. I, I, you know, I'm not. I don't want to get on that. Scientific, <laughs> there's a scientific study experiment, whatever, in a clean chamber or something. I don't know. Yeah. I said, okay, then let's do it. No reply. Yeah, that's that's exactly what Jeff just asked. Gone. That's exactly yeah. what Jeff just asked. He says, is there any scientific I, study or explanation about? Naturally occurring energy orbs. Not, I mean, Heather, what, do you know anything about that? I don't know if they've ever had a study that I've seen that much on it. There's some studies underway right now, but not a lot of data is available because it's in the early stages that, um, right, right. yeah, <laughs> not, not much I can say about them right now until we get more data and <laughs> right. the people that I, I've talked to get more data because they're the ones running the experiment. Okay. Hmm. I, I always get when I tell people, that's one of the things, any of us that are in these groups that will come in and comment on a photo or something, we're not there. We're not rude unless you're rude to us. Then sometimes I can't control myself, but <laughs> we're not rude, but we come in and we don't try to belittle you or, or make you look stupid or, or, uh, um, you know, cut down what you're doing. Or, we're, we're there to educate you and, and, tell you so that when maybe you see something or capture something you may know more if it's real or not we're not in there to to harass you and stuff like that i mean people don't like what we have to say because everybody is so desperate to have a capture of a ghost or an orb mm -hmm. that they don't want to hear what you're saying but i will well, say one thing too. oh so good go ahead sorry no i was just gonna say for anybody out there who goes into these groups I encourage you guys to post stuff and ask questions and don't listen to the people that are just acting stupid, but do <laughs> not go into these groups and post a picture of yourself or tell a private story of yourself and then ask anybody, can you tell me what you're picking up on this? Because yeah. you are going to get really bad information, you know, contact somebody privately. Do not do that in those groups because mm -hmm. Really, half of those people in those groups, at least, if probably more, do not know what they're talking about, and they're trolling in there, and they're going to say everything is demonic, stuff. everything is dangerous. You need to do this. You need to call a priest. There's too yeah. much of that, and so when we try to educate people, we're trying to stop this nonsense from going on because it creates fear, and right. that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to help people especially who are being tormented in their home or, you know, maybe somebody just posted an innocent picture and they're like, Oh, look, I got an orb. And then next thing you know, they're, Oh my God, you have a demon in your house. What if they really believe that? And they start freaking out about it. You know, it's, it's dangerous advice. Yeah. And so that's why, you know, without, you know, sometimes I'm like, Hey, maybe you should Google bill. <laughs> or maybe click on our profiles and take a peek at that. Because if you look at the people that are giving the advice and you go to their profiles, mm -hmm. there is not a lick of anything paranormal on there. There's not a lick of anything that says that they're a medium, that they have abilities, that they do this on a daily basis. Nothing. But Nothing. we can't say it. We Everyone can't say it. Everyone here right. is a past or present member of the Warren Legacy Foundation for Paranormal Research. Everyone here you should be reaching out to and asking for help individually. Please listen to what they're telling you. Do not post stuff online. You don't need the publicity. You don't need the bad information. You sure as hell don't need somebody stupidly saying, oh yeah, you got a demon. Mm. Right. Well, well just, I, too many people go down the rabbit hole, spend thousands of dollars on fake healers oh. and mm -hmm. what they really got is they're a wide open medium and they attract souls to them. I, it's harmless and that's I, all it is. You're right. And I always go back to a case that Tom helped me with in Nebraska. <laughs> that's how we got <laughs> yeah. on. Um, this guy, I is a really nice guy. I 
talk to him in one of these groups because I saw what people were telling him. And it was the most ridiculous things. That, and then he even told me more later on. Someone told him to go to the water, go to the, your faucet, fill up a cup of water. This is my favorite. Say the Lord's Prayer over it and then bless your house with the holy water. Okay. Obviously, he cannot turn it into holy water. They told him to go out and buy paranormal equipment, talk to it. I mean, everything possible. Please that, don't do that. It, I love Connie's reaction. Yeah. 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 It, don't it's, do that. It was, it's insane what they what they yeah. tell people. I mean, I, I it's amazing, amazing, and you know, just just if anybody tells you anything, go look them up and do some research. The problem is a lot of times we can't say if I and Connie and everybody here has seen this. If I go in and somebody asks me, well, why do I have to believe you? And then I tell them what I know, how long I've been doing this. Then I get, well, who cares? You have an ego. <laughs> You know, right? Just because yeah. I respond what they you just ask. think you know everything. Yeah. I know what I have. I feel mm-hmm. it. I feel the yeah. spirits in my house. I'm not saying that your house isn't haunted, but what I'm saying is that orb is not your uncle Clem. So right. you know, maybe he's there, but there's, he's not a piece of dust. There's yeah. a and difference. Thing that they control dust. Remember, they control mm-hmm. the dust. Oh yeah. Yes. Those. Controlling the dust to to Mm -hmm. show us to manifest, so they're controlling. Like in the mummy movie, where like he comes together, and I think he was like the scarabs or the dust or something, and he comes together. It's like that's not what's happening, right? Um, So I'm gonna post this question to everybody here because Brandy's coming in with a question. So let me read this out really quick, so the audience knows what we're talking about. Maybe off topic, but how would I properly speak to and understand a spirit? I believe it is a young boy. It puts pictures face down and opens and closes doors. There is another one on a different floor. The only time I saw it was when I touched a specific stone. I haven't touched it since. Can we give that to Heather and Joe first? That's you guys. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, we should go that direction. So, <laughs> well, I'll start on this one. Um, but personally, what I always tell clients or anyone who reaches out to me saying that they think they have a spirit in their home um, is, first of all, I try to tell them to stand their ground. You know, let them know if it's messing with stuff in their home. You know, can you please stop doing that? I don't like that you're doing that. Or, you know, be you know, you don't really want to be honest too much to the point where you're letting them know you're uncomfortable or afraid of them. Right. But just kind of, you know, stand your ground and just say, you know, could you please stop? And I'm a firm believer. I've never investigated, conducted an EVP session, did anything divination wise in my own home. Um, I always either go to a local park or, you know, some other place to do it. You know, even when I'm testing equipment to see if it works, I leave the house. So I always say you don't want to investigate or try to talk to the spirits outside of that on your own. And that's where you call, you know, any of us to come in or another team that you can find that's reputable or that you can trust. It is always my suggestion when it comes to trying to talk to the spirits in your home. And Brandy knows me and Nikki, so she knows she can reach out Mm -hmm. to us if she needs to. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there you go, Brandy. Um, I can give you an example if you want. I I just recently helped out. A neighbor of mine i haven't even met the woman but i'll explain if you allow me um here where i live there was a facebook page it's one of those moms facebook pages where moms get together and share, share stories and kids stuff and all that and there was a woman who posted something and she was very reluctant to do the do so she posted something online that there was some presence that she felt was in her home that was bothering her young boy who was 12 to 18 months. I'm not sure. Um, and he was, he would cry. He would follow something around the room. The dog would hide under the bed. Um, they would have lights flickering and things like that, you know, electronic devices. So I said, well, you know, I, I asked her some basic questions and I, I, you know, how long you've been in the home? Has anyone recently passed away in your, in your, in your family? Um, any kind of event that may, so, she said, I said, do you have any antiques or anything? She goes, well, I have this antique bed, bedroom set that was my grandparents. Nobody else in that family wanted it, so I took it. It's in our spare bedroom. Uh, I said, okay. Um, so, you know, after talking to her for a little while, I, 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 I theorized that, and, and I'm sorry, I left out about her. her grandmother had passed away a couple of years ago. So I theorized that it was probably her grandmother coming to visit the child. Um, nothing bad was happening. 
you know, think evil uh, like that. But she posted this stuff online, and immediately she got about 50 responses within an hour or two. And people were saying, well, you need to call a priest. You need to get their house exercised and this, that, and the other thing. <laughs> and my daughter, who is a would-be paranormal researcher, my daughter Emily says, no, you need to call my father. So that would be literally a half a mile around the corner from me. So I said, Em, I said, just give her my phone number. So she called me. And, I, you know, she said I had to talk her back down off the ledge because be like, oh, you have a demon in your house and all this stuff. I'm like, you don't have a demon in your house. It just so happens that the previous owner of the house was a good friend of mine and the fire chief in my town. He had the house built. He lived there for 27 years with his family. My son grew up with his son playing baseball. We all knew each other. So I called him down in Florida just to be sure. I'm like, hey, Pete, you guys ever have any issues with paranormal activity in your home? I said, I wouldn't think so because I would have known about it. He's like, no, why? He said, well, the people that you sold your home to are having some issues, or they believe they're having some issues. So long story short, you know, I told her, I said, listen, if, if, if this may be the spirit of your grandmother coming to visit the child, you know, looking at, you know, to see the child and check in on him, I said, just walk around your house in a normal voice, <clears throat> acknowledge her presence, say, Graham, Grandma, she's like, well, should I say it in Polish? Because your grandma was Polish and spoke Polish. She said, should I say it in English or Polish? I said, it doesn't matter. She's going to understand you. She'll understand you. I said, just walk around the house very calmly, and acknowledge her presence and say, thank you so much for visiting. I got this. But you're scaring um, uh, Joshua, I think his name was, Jacob. And so she did this. I said, do it for a couple of nights until until you see a difference in, or a change or a, a cessation of activities. So about a week went by, and I didn't hear from her. I'm like, okay, well, maybe no news is good news. But I, I sent her a text, and she said, Joe, she's like, it worked. Yeah. She goes, I've been doing it all week long, and nothing, she, she's, she's gone. I don't feel her here anymore. I said, okay, well, just keep doing what you're doing, and let me know if anything changes. Um, now, do I know for sure that was her grandmother? No. I, yeah. I, just, I it was a theory based on my experience on the God knows how many cases I've worked on, but I look as spirits as, I mean, human spirits as people, you know, we're all spirits sitting here talking. We're just in a human, I mean, a, a physical shell, physical right. body, you know, at least th that's my belief. So, you know, sometimes it's all it takes, but you know, I always say people mock what they don't understand. So, yeah. Although these people on Facebook were probably trying to be helpful, they're you know they're they're just regurgitating stuff that they see on te television, which makes our job so much harder. Right? <laughs> how many times, and my colleagues on this call, how many times you've been called out to a house, and I said, well, I had ABC Paranormal here, and they told me I have a demon. <laughs> they told me that I need to have my house exercised, or I have a portal. So many, or something like that, and I'm like, no. I said, you don't have a demon here. So now we got to talk them back off the ledge. And you know you can't put the stuff back in the horse. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and it's really hard. It makes our job so much more difficult to bring them back down to reality. And one of the first questions I ask is, how many <clears throat> TV shows do you watch? Oh, yeah. geez, we watch them all. I love this one. I said, stop watching them. <laughs> or, said, or learn to watch them purely for entertainment. Yeah. 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 Judge judge upon thing by what's actually happening in the house. Right. Yeah. Not not by your fear. Right. Just because a coffee cup flies across the room, did it hit you? Did it hit anybody? Or is it just trying to get your attention? Yeah. Don't let your fear take an experience that's possibly beautiful and turn it into something horrifying. That was my experience as a child growing up with abilities. I didn't know the difference between something good or something that was not so good. I just could feel that something was different mm -hmm. or maybe I would see something, but I wasn't able to have that discernment because different automatically was scary because I just, I, I couldn't relax enough to, to try to figure it out. Well, now it's natural for me to be able to do that. I can tell you right away if something is malicious or if something is positive or loving, you know, and sometimes people will misconstrue anger, 
sadness, you know, negative emotions, they will misconstrue that as something that is evil as well. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Kelly's saying we ask most of our clients if they watch paranormal shows, especially if they're using the lingo that you hear on yeah, TV. I like debunk. I hate that word. Bill, <laughs> don't say it. <laughs> what word do uh -oh. you prefer, Joe? Uh -oh. <laughs> there goes Chris. <laughs> too, much, too much demon talk. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm sorry, Connie. What was that? What word do you prefer? Well, I'm not debunked. Anything but that. I, I don't I have use that a all word. The time. I, I don't know. I just don't like that word. It's 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 like moist. It's just <laughs> Joe, that word. Joe likes. I, I Joe knew that was the word you were going to tie it to. Wait, 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 wait. I want to point out Joe actually <laughs> likes nothing I do or wear. He, <laughs> he doesn't like true. the words I use. He doesn't like Stop my shirt. He does <laughs> I love you. Oh, you know, I wanted to add one thing. I apologize. This whole story I just told you about this neighbor of mine that was, you know, I was helping. I never entered the house. I was mm. supposed to go over there one night. I was going to sit at their kitchen table, not bring my two van loads of equipment, which I don't have. But, you know, I, I said, I like mystery to go machine. And... what's that? The mystery machine. The mystery yeah, machine. no, right. The Scooby mobile. <laughs> yeah. um, so I never even went to the home. I didn't have to. So yeah. not, so on TV, it's like, you know, oh, geez, you got a haunted house. OK, we'll be over with our team of investigators and all our equipment. It didn't call for that. Right. It, it just, I just needed to talk to them calmly. I was going to go over and meet them. I haven't even met them yet. Um, and I was going to go over and meet them and meet the little boy, but her husband got called into work. And I said, look, I'm not going to come over if your husband's not home. You don't know me. You know, I was trying to be very respectful. I said, but try this and try it. You know, and, and I never, I never entered the home. I, ne I never went over there. And yeah. it's not always necessary. You know, a lot of us that are gifted, um, can do remote viewing um and and you know concentrate on a place and and i know connie you're shaking your head you can pick up on if there's something malevolent there not necessarily mm -hmm. demon but you know something some kind of negative energy you know um and and a lot of times we can deal with it remotely we don't have, actually have to be there if it's something of intelligence it's gonna know right mm -hmm. if it's something negative and evil mm -hmm. and dare i say demonic it's going to know and it's right. going to know if you're remoting in there and it's not going to like it. And it's going to try to hide because they don't want to be discovered. That was actually right. how I got. Um, so the, the case that Bill talked about that I worked with him, that was actually how I got the guy to trust me is he was like, well, how do I know that you guys are for real? And um, <laughs> I asked him to sit down where he lived on the couch and I told him to look around and I described what he was looking at because I was basically remoting through his eyes. Yeah. Uh, which was very awesome because it was the very first time I ever did it. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and he was like, how are you doing this? There's where, where are the cameras at? So I kind of freaked him out a little bit. Um, but I'm like, no, I'm actually, I'm actually looking through you to see where you're at. And he's like, okay, you guys, if, if, if that's what you're seeing and you're telling me the truth, which, which I was, he was like, then that's who I need to work with. So it was kind of cool that that was able to, that we were able to go that way. Yeah. Yeah. It, get, it to, took me it us. took me a while to to gain his trust to even yeah. talk to him and then i said this guy i don't want to go into the details but right. i said this guy needs somebody to go to the house and when i found out he lived pretty close to tom i was yeah. like hey <laughs> Half hour. so yeah 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 and, and we went and and, and it, it bill's right it was somebody that i needed to sit with and talk to and that's all we did there was there was no Sometimes equipment, came right. out, no nothing. It was me going down to sit to him, and explaining what he was what he was going through was not right. a spiritual issue. Uh, it was something else, and yeah. and he was like, "Oh," and now he's doing better. I, I still hear from him every once in a while, but he's doing yeah, much yeah. better now. So there's, yeah, there's a lot of cases where, you know. I've, I've gone over someone's home and sat with them or place of business, wherever, you know, there's alleged paranormal activity may be occurring and you sit there and they, sometimes they just need some, someone to listen to them that won't think they're crazy. Someone that knows what they're doing. Yeah. And, you know, maybe just for um, theatrics, I'll say, okay, let me walk around the house, see what I feel or whatever. Um, I usually bring holy oil, holy water. If I feel there's something negative, even if I don't, it's psycho. It may be psychosomatic. Right now, I always say, look, I don't believe people are lying or making stuff up. I believe that they really believe in their mind that they're experiencing this. So right. I'm not 
you know, I, you know, yeah. I, I'm not, I never call someone a liar and say, you're just fabricating this. They may be, it's very real to them. So I'll go, I'll go around and do my thing. You know, what I've been doing for many years. And then, you know, a few nights later, a week later, you call him and say, Joe, what did you do? I haven't been able to yeah. sleep this great. It, I didn't actually do anything. Right. I didn't remove anything from the house. There wasn't anything there. I didn't feel anything. However, just me going over there and listening to him and doing what I did, in their mind, I took care of it. And, right. and I probably didn't do anything but just bring some peace to them and their family. Yeah. You know, now, on the other side of the coin, if there is something lurking in the shadows, then we got some work to do. Now we got to draw it out, you know. And my belief is the way I was trained and the way I was raised is God gave us the ability to cast out demons, negative entities. We yeah. all have that ability, you know. A lot of people aren't comfortable with it, but anyone could could pray prayers of deliverance. That's a layman's form of exorcism, and those can be very powerful. Exorcisms are very rare, as we talked about earlier. They're, they're very rare, uh, unless you go to Rome. I mean, then they're having like a drive through exorcism. <laughs> it's crazy. Exorcisms are very rare and can be very and, harmful to a person psychologically if they're not truly um, possessed. Yeah. Possession, so, yeah. If you're possessed, you're not going to know you're possessed. We've got cases where people are like, I need some go, somebody to come over and exercise me. I've got a, an attachment. I'm possessed. Like, you're not possessed. You won't know. Stuart's asking if they are believing it, like you're talking about, if they're believing it, is it possible that they are manifesting it themselves? Yeah, good point. Excellent mm -hmm. point. Self-manifestation is a large part of this. Yeah. You yeah. know, it, it really is. But again, like I said, with most cases like that, maybe not all, but most cases, just by talking to them, and sometimes you got to go over there. You just have to go. They want to meet you. They want to talk to you in person. But sometimes that's and all it takes. Yeah. I, like, I didn't really do anything. I don't need to bring all this equipment and set it up. I'm not interested in that. I'm just interested in helping this person with their paranormal affliction or not. You know, but, you know, it, 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 if you can get them to believe and stop watching these TV shows that are putting it in their heads. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, the people that go out and try to help them, maybe they have the best intentions, but their only formal training is watching television shows. That's right. the worst right. possible well, thing you can do. Yes. Public well, service announcement. If you have a haunting, if you think you have paranormal activity, if you think that something is wrong, make sure that you work with somebody who's going to work with you no matter what. Like, we don't abandon people. And I've been on teams before where it's like, well, they're using drugs, so we're out. You well, know what I mean? They don't know what they're doing. And then exactly. their egos, their egos exactly. don't let them admit it. They're in over exactly. their heads, and then they ghost people. They get well, wait, that's... and they ghost them, and then I'll get a call, or one of you guys will get a call. Yeah. And they're like, oh, my God, this person said I had a mm -hmm. demon portal in my bathroom, and, and then they left, and they won't call me yeah. back. Like, well, that's they'll say that sometimes because it's outside of their scope, so they'll say it's a demon or they'll, you know, yep. you know right. something along those lines when it, that's not even what it is. Or, you know, if – they're having some other trouble that's non-paranormal. They don't tell them. They just, you know, ghost them and leave them hanging. And if it's a self-manifestation, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what's going and on. And they need help. Biggest pet peeve this. with people like and, that. Like, and wait, you this don't know you're doing man up and say it and call one of us. That yeah. You know what we're doing. Sorry, Bill. Go ahead. But, no, no, no. It's all good. <laughs> but that's, I get aggravated. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I wanted to say until Connie brought it up a little bit. If you guys are looking for help, you know, even if you don't want to contact one of us or you want somebody local by you, it's very important to research the team. Now, the thing is, there's a lot of teams out there that just don't know a lot about what we're talking about. They learned from watching TV, which is fine to, to start. But if you need help, the problem is these people, all they know is how to go in with equipment and look for ghosts. They don't know about psychiatric illness. They don't know about addiction. They don't know about self-manifestation. They don't know about energy, which is probably a huge majority of the time. They don't know how to cleanse with singing bowls and things like that that can cleanse the energy and just help, you know, change everything in the house. They are just there to find a ghost. That's what they want to do. Yep. Yeah, and, and throw stuff up on their social media pages and say, right. hey, look at me. They're not willing to put in the 40 years like we have. 
They just right. want immediate notoriety and attention. Look, when we started, there wasn't an internet. There wasn't social media. You know, there I'm an old anything. fashioned guy. I'm old now, you know. But it just <laughs> grinds my gears that these people are so impatient or they, they want to ride your coattails and say, well, you know, I know Joe Frankie. I'm like, well, what does that mean? You know, <laughs> or, you know well, right. I, I was lucky that I, I was, say that I was trained by the Warrens. I grew up with them. They were family to me. They weren't like the world famous Warrens. They were people. Because people always ask me, what were they like as people? I said, well, I'll tell you. I said, they were like loving grandparents. They were normal people with abnormal hobbies. Yeah. You know? So I got to, I'm going to bring this because this has been out here for a little while. Josh is asking, Josh is saying, I would love to hear everyone's thoughts on making the paranormal field more legit meaning you have to get certified or a license by some sort of overseeing agency or something in order to do residentials and help people. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> well, I, here's the thing. With that. I was going to say, he belongs to me, so he knows my answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a tough one. Yeah. No, it is, it is a tough one. I love you, Josh. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it is a tough one to deal with because there, a lot of people say that, and – the problem is you're always going to have other people say, well, nobody knows everything. So why are we going to get certified from this person? Because they don't understand. The, the thing is, you don't need that actual. It, it's good. It would be good if there was a place to do that. But you know what? Go in and learn everything. Yeah. Go learn sorry, everything. Who's certifying the certifier? Like yeah. we need yeah. to. <laughs> right. Go, just, just study everything. Learn about how to debunk things. Learn about <laughs> <laughs> learn about photography, learn about CCTVs, learn about psychology, learn about psychiatric illness, learn about addiction. We, we take, uh, Heather knows this because she's in the, she took the course I'm in. We learn about uh, parapsychology, metaphysics, quantum physics. You know, there's so many things out there that can help you learn about energy, that can help mm -hmm. develop, a, a, you know, a, a different perspective because you, the idea is to go into somebody's home I'm not talking about public stuff. That's all different. Um, I, um, I, I, you know, when you go That's into a, a person's home, next week. yeah, you're not going into a person's home to find a ghost. You're hopefully going in there to not find one. You want to go in to find all the natural causes mm -hmm. that of what's going on to help the person, no matter what it is. Exactly. So you're, you're not joyriding into the house you know, to just go find the ghost. Cause that like, you're that's all saying, why I go to Pennhurst, you know what I mean? Like, that's why I go to large locations. I go to places for thrills and then I have the separate where I'm helping, you know what I'm saying? But you know, sometimes yeah. during the thrills, you end up helping too, you know, yeah. sometimes yeah. that yeah. happens. I, I do know the question. Cause we were talking about just beforehand is mostly stemming from um, some project. I've been talking to a lot of people recently about this. And um, the government is in some areas getting ready to step in or are working on projects to where, because people are getting hurt by these paranormal teams who say, I'm a paranormal yeah. investigator, I'm coming to help you. So it's not so much a certification as to who knows what and what governing body is going to be there. It's right. the government that is going to start saying, you know, okay, just like your pest control guy, you know, you, you need to register with the government down the road to actually say you can conduct these home in, in certain places, like in Salem, Massachusetts, you have mm -hmm. to, in order to be a medium, you have to like be registered in order to do that. In Casadega, Florida, you have to be approved mm -hmm. by the town. You have to go through a process in order to be approved by the town in order to do readings for the public. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they want to make sure that people know what they're doing. Is so, yes, I county? see. What? I'm sorry. Is that if you're charging people for it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah that, and I would agree with that. Or if you're at, you know, if you're advertising, you yeah. know, if you're advertising mm -hmm. in some way, shape or form. Yeah, because you're providing um, a service. Right. Yeah. You're providing yeah. purpose. And so, you know, they don't want they don't want people to come to a place like Salem and be like, oh, it's just a town full of charlatans. Mm -hmm. And then it gets a bad reputation. They take that stuff very seriously. But, you know, there's so many people in the field that think they know what they're doing. I've had people tell me like I posted, oh, you know, I was at this cemetery and they're like, you need to be very careful because you could get an attachment. And I'm like, do you and they're on a team. <laughs> and I'm like, do you not know what I do? Like, do you not know? Like, I deal with attachments. I mm -hmm. deal with them 
every freaking day that I go to work pretty much. And you're telling me that I need to be careful. Like I, I understand that, but right. what, what do you do when you have an attachment? Like what's your process? There's not one right answer for things too. So if there's a governing body, it's like, how do you break down yeah. each sector of what people do? You know, like I know spirit release therapy and I have shamanic techniques that I can utilize for things. Um, so, you know, who's the overseer, like what government overseer overlord is going to certify for these things and who's certifying well, in Salem? You know what I mean? Like who is doing this? That's. Well, I would hope well, that it what, would be somebody with our kind of experience that actually know what they're talking about. Right. right. You know, you know, but you're right. Who's going to certify the certifier is yeah, unfortunately a lot of this... teams actually have classes. And then at the end of the class, you get a certification from somebody. I'm like, how vain are you to think you are qualified to sign that? Somebody contacted me. So I made a post a long, long time ago saying, hey, if anybody needs help, you can contact me and, you know, and reach out to me, DM me. And some guy messages me and he goes, I saw that you made a post saying that you needed help. I'm a certified paranormal investigator. And I'm like... <laughs> And I, like, I didn't even know what to do. I, I, I want to be like, by who? Like, what are you? T I, I just, I was like, okay, perhaps well, you need to read the post again. Like, what are you talking yeah. about? One, one of the things that I talk about in the lectures that I bring up about stuff like this is the, the again, the people don't realize the dangers. So if you've been watching ghost adventures you know for five years and now you want to go do that you know okay go out to the local cemetery whatever but if you go into a person's house the problem is let's say you go in and you're, you're talking to the the person and they're hearing voices and they're seeing things and and they're having all these issues in the house you've watched tv mm -hmm. so right away you're going oh my god it's a ghost it's a demon and you're telling them that oh we're going to get rid of it we're going to cleanse it we're going to the, the thing that you didn't investigate and find out is that person has schizophrenia. And right. now your cleansing is not going to do crap to those voices and everything because it's his schizophrenia doing it. Now you've endangered him more because now he believes that those voices are demonic. Well, and if it was demonic, your cleansing is just going to piss it off. Exactly. Right, right. I mean, right. You know, Could be was, both. Throw some black salt around, be fine. No. <laughs> right, they right. Don't like really the smell there, of sage. The smell of sage <laughs> makes them go oh, away. I've had people tell me that, oh my God, that they, they cleanse urine. demons with sage. I was like, oh, please. But right? th well, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of dangers, and, and you know, you shouldn't go, if you're new to this, reach out to people like us to other teams that have a lot of experience in residential cases and learn from them and find out come to lectures go to places. that's where your best part is because most of the people that are lecturing like us at places we have the experience and the education on this so Ghost you know kind of paranormal investigating are two different things mm -hmm. You know, yeah. people don't realize ghost hunting, ghost hunting, and paranormal investigating are two different things. Yeah. Joe's a ghost hunter. And he's a certified one. Along, yes. the, uh, <laughs> along the same lines is the people that are so eager to get a case that they will blatantly misrepresent themselves and their knowledge to a family. Now, someone's coming to you for help, and they and they may seem desperate for help because they're they're really frightened. They're really scared because something's going on or something's happening that they don't understand. All right? right. And the first thing you should do as a researcher, investigator, whatever you want to call yourself is, all right, find out, okay, what's going on. Let's start right here where we are and move backwards. When did this activity start? Well, I bought the house in 1984, 40 years ago, but it just started around COVID. All right, well, what significant event or something that happened in your life do you think started this alleged activity? I mean, right. there's, a, there's a lot of investigating that needs to happen before you start spouting off at the mouth that, oh, you got a demon here. I, I can't help you. you you're going to have to call somebody else. Uh, and, and, like, why would you say that? Because now, like, oh, my God, they said I have a demon. They think you're an expert right. because you're mm -hmm. representing yourself as one. And now – 
if if we're, one of us is lucky enough to get the case, now we're gonna like, oh my god, okay, let's let's take this one yeah. at, one thing at a time. Let's look for a natural explanation before we look at the supernatural. So, you know, some of them think do that, that if there's no, some of them think that if we go in a house and it's possibly demonic, we're just gonna throw some holy water around and it'll be good. <laughs> They're gonna be in for a rude awakening. <laughs> yeah. that I had somebody come in that was trying to help me years ago because I started off as a ghost hunter and I thought I was a paranormal investigator. And then I ended up in a bad situation that was very personal to me and I needed help. And some people came in to help me and they were, something kept touching me and I didn't know what it was, but it felt comforting. And this is before I had developed my mediumship. Mm -hmm. They're threatening to throw holy water on me <laughs> and commanding this thing to stop and, and and threatening the holy water. And I'm sitting there and in my head, I was like, I said, I was like, don't stop touching me because it felt comforting. And it come to find out it was my grandmother. Mm. Like, you want to throw holy water on my grandmother? Like, <laughs> come on. Well, God forbid you should chastise these people for what they're doing. Then they get yeah. ticked off at you. You know, who made you an expert? Well, let me tell you. Uh, I, this is what I've been doing for the last 37 years. What have you been doing? You're not even 37 years old. I've been doing this before you were even diapers. That, that's we got awesome it. When they disrespect you like that. I got a question for you all. Nikki is asking, you keep bringing up paranormal TV shows. Do you feel there are any TV shows that are legit or close no. to legit? I do. Well, no, I don't. Well, well he, here's the thing. I'll, 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 you go in a second, Connie. Hold on. I, if, I, I'm not going to say a specific show or anything like that, but I tell people some of them, some are real investigators. They were investigators before, some of them. They use real equipment, they go into some real haunted locations. But you're seeing an edited one hour show of possibly 20 hours of footage. You know, it's for entertainment. We go right. to places and we sit there for 15 hours sometimes and, and, and get that's what nothing. That's I meant when I said no, because it's yeah. Yeah. entertainment. Yes. Oh, go ahead. It's not the real. The show that I'm talking about is not a paranormal investigation show necessarily, but Dead Files is real. That's, that's, that's what Stuart posted was Dead Files. So mm. Yeah, that yeah. show's real. I And I know Steve and mm. I, I have talked to him a lot. Steve has never had a paranormal experience. <laughs> right, right. And... You know, when he was with when he was working with Amy, he had told me he's like, I can't knock her. She's legitimate for what she does. He's like, I don't get it. I don't have abilities. I don't have any of that stuff. But he's like, she's a thousand percent real. He's like, we don't fake that stuff. He's like, that's it. He he would not want to have any part of it if it was. Right. And so right. he told me she's she, you know, she's the real deal. And I believe him on that. Um yeah. Well, if you're faking stuff, and I know a lot of these shows do it, yes, then your credibility goes out the window. And none of us would stake our years of experience would, would risk that, I should say. Because you get right. caught once, you lose all your credibility, you'll never get it back. Yeah. You know, so why would I tie fishing line to a chair? Why? I wouldn't do it. But there are shows I won't name that have done it because I know people in the shows, I know people behind the cameras. And like, oh yeah, we tied fishing line today. It was hilarious. I'm like, yeah, it'd be hilarious if you actually told people you did that. Right. But you didn't. I, you misrepresented it to the public on television that this really happened. You got all these Oscar performances going. Whoa, whoa. Well, you know, <laughs> I mean, I could do. With the, I could lie with the best of them if, if I wanted to. Right. Well, it's why, funny why because you never that? see them where it's like, oh my god, did you hear that? And someone's like, no. What do you mean? <laughs> I didn't hear yeah. anything. Oh my God! It said Never. this, and then here, let me play it back. Do you hear it? No, I'm not hearing anything. Never me. I'm going that right. doesn't. That yeah. never, never happened. <laughs> well, Stephanie's saying this. Also, hard to not call out teams. They are posting stuff and deeming it paranormal without really investigating a natural explanation. There was one that told a client a spirit cut their pipes in their bathroom with a saw, and then well, that really happened though. I saw. Why? So the spirit was like this. The saw was. Yeah, yeah. I had him build and, me an addition. And here's a perfect example <laughs> when you're looking laundry? for a team. Yeah. Look at their social media. We all have social yeah. media, but you, if you look at our social media, and again, 
I've been doing this 35 years. You're going to see very little evidence on my social media. I might yeah. be talking about things and stuff like yeah. that. We don't do stuff to post it. We may post something once in a while if we get something really crazy. We use some of it at our lectures. But if you go to a, a paranormal team and then you look at their social media and their whole social media is orb photos orbs. and videos <laughs> from, from people's yeah, but yeah, people's investigations that they do in residential homes, they're posting all their stuff. That's confidential. I, I don't so do that. don't go with those teams because do it's just I mean they may be good at public stuff, whatever they want to do, but I don't wouldn't trust them in somebody's home, you know. Yeah. And what's funny, I don't mean to chime in here, but you guys just with that conversation have all proved my point that we need to have some type of government oversight committee with these teams. <laughs> I don't necessarily I agree. agree with you, but who's going to do it? It should be an overlord. Joe. An Joe. overlord. They will be the overlord. What is the name? You better have a shirt for me. Vice said she was going to have a shirt for me. <laughs> Joe's, Joe, Joe's, the, 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 Joe's the head. Joe's the head expert. So. We need to have him. We need to have him as this, you know. Oh, <laughs> Look, I, I just want to. I just want to teach people if they're willing to listen. But I never ever profess to know everything. I'm still learning. Nobody knows everything. Right. But I mean, us as a team collectively, we got a lot of knowledge and a lot of power, you know. And you know that's we're why we're very fortunate because we have so many people with so many different skill sets, mm -hmm. which is very different because you get these other teams and it's like, yeah, I've got five tech guys and a sensitive. Like, okay, well. And everybody's got a title. Yeah. Case manager, assistant case manager, tech specialist. Oh, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Yeah. Kill me now. Right? Okay, I mean, I have titles, but like I earned them. <laughs> no, you know what I'm talking I'm not self-appointed. <laughs> Yes. You've earned yes. Joe, Joe can be the time. head anaconda. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. Don't I was waiting for him to put him up to it. <laughs> I was like, I didn't do anything. I'm staying out of that one. <laughs> your your wife made it clear. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. thank God she just left for work. I hope. <laughs> Annabelle, did you leave? Yeah, That's wait. Annabelle, yeah, wait. My, my wife's asking about that. W one is back in the case, and the other one is outside sleeping. I think. <laughs> yeah, she finally stopped yelling. Yeah, she yeah. finally stopped yelling at you. So. <laughs> well, you know, I know we joke around a lot and we get pissed about stuff, but I will say there's a lot of good people doing good work out there. Yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to knock every paranormal team out there, but the ones Absolutely. that we're talking about, you know who you are. Yeah, it's, and, we're know, very passionate about what we do. And, you know, like I said, I started off as a ghost hunter. I didn't know shit. I didn't know what I was doing. Like I, I, and then I was trying to get the knowledge and trying to figure things out. And I, and I was shocked because I'm like, there's no one right, one right way to do this. Like I was very, very surprised. And, sure. you know, knowledge is power. And if people are on teams, you should still be trying to learn. You should still be trying to expand and trying to grow, collaborate with other people, talk to other people, have decent conversations with people, you yeah. know, like we for all... the love of God, like stop arguing <laughs> about all this stuff, Bill. No. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we all started somewhere. We all started somewhere. We all had people that helped us learn. Yeah. I didn't quite have the Warrens like Joe, you know, but we, we all had people that helped us learn. And I that's what you do. If you, if you're starting yeah. out, we're not knocking you. We're saying, go talk to people and learn as much as you can. We all learn every day. Yeah. I have every book you could imagine back there. I have every audio book you could imagine. I listen to you stuff all the time. For dummies by Zach Bagans. I do. I, I show it to you. I, swear I have to it. You I, have it. I, I got it. I never read it, but I have it. No, I swear to you, I have it. I have it. I, I, I read it to read it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had but it on audio thing. and I couldn't deal with it. <laughs> I have it on audio too. But here's the thing. Every book 
you can find or or any anybody you're talking to, you will find one little piece of information that you didn't know or you didn't right. think about. Somebody always has something. And I'll There's be something. honest with you, I read that book and I don't remember now, but I'm sure there was things in there that just went, oh, yeah, I never thought of that, you know. For sure. Because we don't know everything, you know, but some of us do have a lot of experience and well, education. But There were straight up things that I did not believe in until mm -hmm. I had the experience to where I was like, oh, like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't believe in you, you know, <laughs> like, it happens, we have to be yeah. willing to grow and expand. If you really want to help people, is there a medium who does past life aggression like you do? Near? Um, I'm not sure I would have to think about that. I do them virtually, though, as long as you are in an environment where you will not be disturbed, and I can see you then it absolutely is something that I do. Um, but, you know, we all should continue to have an open mind. This is, you know, something that we're very passionate about. If you're passionate about helping people, then, you know, that's very, that, that's very, very important. Do it to your best ability. Make sure that you're being of service to people and that you're not wreaking havoc and making a situation worse. And if you are a ghost hunter, then that's cool too if you want to go out and do that, but be safe about it and learn yeah. how and be legal. Yeah. And and be legal. Ask permission. Fear for protection and be legal. Please. Don't break in the places because you could get hurt. Yeah. I would never do that anymore. I've never done that in my <laughs> life. <laughs> never. Never have I done that. Nope. Where's my beer? You know, I gotta tell you, up until just a few years before Lorraine passed away. I was still consulting with her on cases. No. You know, I mean, I still have questions, and I'm sad to say that I my mentors are gone now. Yeah. So I depend on you, my friends, my colleagues, say, hey, Bill, what do you think about this? I'm kind of stumped. And, and I'm not too proud to ask for help. Dust. So I'm not a photographer about, expert, like, you know, well, by I'm any means. Yeah. yeah. And if that's my kind. That's not my wheelhouse. You and know, I'll, so I'm not so impressed that that is my. <laughs> I'll self profess that that is my downfall because I I hate bothering others to ask for help or ask questions. Why? Um, That's right. All of us. I, because I feel I, I I'm very new still. I mean, I'm, I've learned very very rapidly, um, very rapidly. Thank God. Um, but I'm still hesitant because I'm so used to I'm I'm a definite male to where I do things on my own. <laughs> so well, yeah, I, I just I don't read directions. I just don't think exactly. So I just don't, I just don't have it. Uh, yep. See, look, Nikki just confirmed it because I'm a man, Connie. See that? Even my <laughs> wife will call me out on it. Hey, um, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, Nikki's right. But that's, but that's not, I mean, it's, it's not, it's, it's a fallacy of mine that I have that I'm not, I don't take that step. But if, for instance, now, Connie, I'm not calling you out. I'm just saying because. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's because you do so much. I would feel like I was be interrupting because you were always so No, busy. because so, I will tell you, there are times when I reach out, I ask Bill questions. I ask people questions all the time. Sometimes you need a different perspective. Right. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Even if you yeah. think that you know the answer, sometimes yeah. you need a different perspective on something. And that's very useful to have that because then it's like, oh my God, like I never thought about it that way. That's how, that's how we learn. And even if you're like, okay, I think I know the answer, getting that validation of somebody else agreeing and say, yeah, I, I totally agree. This is why, whatever, like you can bother me. Like you right. can reach out to me. You can reach out yeah. to Bill. Oh yeah. Reach out to Bill. Yeah, He'll Bill yell at you. All the time, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, do you oh, mind man, if I, I shift? I know, it's, I know it's getting late. Do you mind if I shift it a little bit? Because we've all been so occupying this time of, of these stories. I would love, Heather, I'm going to put her on the spot, to tell everybody <laughs> a little bit about your books. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of course, tell I don't have them near me right now, so I'll just do the best <laughs> I can to explain. Um, but I do um, have two previous books. Uh, the first book is uh, Haunted Southern Nevada Ghost Towns. That one covers all of the different haunted ghost towns from Belmont South in Nevada. And that book was actually inspired uh, from Real Haunts Ghost Towns, the documentary that my family, which is my paranormal team, was featured in. Um, so you'll have all the personal experiences that we've had during the filming, as well as um, just a whole bunch of different stories that I've gathered from other paranormal investigators. 
Then the second book that came out in the series is Ghosts and Legends of the Vegas Valley. And that one kind of turned more into Ghosts of the Mob almost, huh. because you have everything from Bugsy Siegel to, you know, different experiences that we had investigating a location that was the former Copa Club. Um, mob hit rooms that they actually, when the new owners bought the building, found blood still in the drain. So just a whole bunch of different stories um, from them, you know, there. And it also includes um, different investigations and stuff that happened in Boulder City and the railroad tunnels and everything along there. And then um, the new book comes out Monday, and that is Haunted Florida Lighthouses. And that covers, um, I think I counted yesterday, and there's 23 lighthouses that are included in there a couple of which are no longer in existence because they've been swept away by some of the hurricanes that we've gotten. Um, and those are just the beginning. There's another book coming out next spring. I've signed a contract for two more. And then there's a list of about 10 more that we're hoping to have out in the next two years in the yeah, series. Fine. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yep. I'm, I'm desperately trying to get mine done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to have it so I can have it at the beginning of the year. We'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh, Bill. <laughs> it's like getting to be crunch time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I originally started on different ones, and then I changed <laughs> my thing and put them to the back burner for now. So this one is just kind of about my whole life with paranormal. So that's mm -hmm. the first one coming out. Hopefully. You sound like me. You should see my Google Docs. They're all like list of different books. <laughs> and I just kind of rotate whichever one I feel like working on at the time. <laughs> well, once I get the first one, the other ones will be pretty quick because they're almost done. So, <laughs> All right. Well, I think I'm going to start wrapping it up. Um, yep. I want to kind of wrap it back up to where we started from, which is the fact that all of you wonderful, wonderful people, along with Chris, who is must have had another power outage. He did. Right? He's having lost power. He's having he's done power. Power. Out there, yeah, that too. Um, are all going to be out right here at Phantasm Orlando. Go out to phantasmofficial.com. You'll be able to see that up along the top banner, there's one that says paranormal. And all of my guests on here today will actually be there doing different panels at the locations, free to talk to you, everything else. And all the information we talk about, how we share information, how we learn from each other, everything else, all of them will be there to discuss. Um, there will be a, a question and answer panel that's going to go on with everybody up there uh it's going to we know it's going to be a lot of questions and hopefully we'll have a lot of the answers um that are out there as well but again thank you all i really really appreciate you all coming on and allowing me to be the one to advertise this um bill before we go are we allowed to are we allowed to say something really quick um he's like depending yes, on yes we could we could say that we could we could say it Okay. Do you want to do that? So sure. you're the one who let me know about it. So <laughs> um, it, it's, it's not out there yet. It probably next week or so. Um, but we're on another um, cover of American paranormal magazine. Uh, this time there's actually two, but this time it is, I believe it's the Midwest edition mm -hmm. and it's going to be, I'm on it, but it's featuring Tom and Nikki as Yay. my Nebraska team out in the midwest so yeah. there's gonna be an amazing story on us and uh, we're on the cover and and then also i think it's the southeast edition this month also with um the georgia team so keep an eye out for those probably next week you'll see some uh, announcements about this when it comes out yep thank you appreciate it very awesome. much congratulations thank you thank you congratulations uh, appreciate it um now, with that said, everybody, um, thank you again for coming on the show. Anyone who has the ability to go out to Phantasm Orlando, go out there. Go meet everybody. Go talk to everybody. Go learn as much as you can. Remember, Phantasm Orlando is not just the paranormal. They're also going to be doing a horror and a shot film festival. So that's also going to be going on. They're also doing a cosplay. So they have a little mm -hmm. bit of everything going on out there. Uh, if you want something to do, go out there. Check it out. Um, it's the September 15th to the 17th. You can go out and meet all these wonderful people that are on my panel right now, uh, along with Chris McKinnell had to bail out because, you know, thunderstorms in Paraguay, whatever. <laughs> <Mostly>. <laughs> but, um, you know, because they have the most structured uh, electrical system out there in the world. Uh, but <laughs> thank you again for coming on. Um, Connie, I actually have to talk to you later about something else, but okay. I'll talk fine about that. Um, but Again, thank you. I hope the the Fantastic Orlando was very successful. 
for those who I have not met before, which would be Heather and Joe, thank you so much. And I appreciate you guys coming on. It was very nice meeting you. Thank you. Nice meeting you too. We'll see each other again, Tom. Don't worry. Bill knows he's always on my show, so it's just like a he's like a regular on my show now. I'm like a co-host now. So, yeah, it kind of rolls in. You know, he just walks in and says, "Hey, can I be on your show? Sure, be on my show." Um, and this is how I met Tom, by the way. It is. This is. <laughs> I was on his show. He was. He was on my show. Um, one of my very. In fact, you were my third guest. Yeah. Uh, ever that I had yeah. <laughs> uh, about a year and a half ago when I started this program. So, um, but for those people who don't know, this is perfect that you all came on and talked about everything you did because my show is designed about learning. Uh, and all of you talked about different ways and different things that helped so many people that will be watching the show who either watched it live. Now we're going to be watching it recording later to learn from your experiences and, and who to reach out to and how to go about certain things that I guarantee they've never learned or heard before. Um, so it's important to me that anytime I have a guest or multiple guests on that the audience members take something away that they have learned. So thank you for sharing experiences because I know they've learned something from you guys tonight. Um, Thanks for having us. Um, yeah. Um, if you want to, you can stay backstage while I shut the show down. I'll come back on and talk to you all. If you got to go, you got to go. Um, other than that, thank you for coming on. And those who stay behind, I will talk to you in a minute. I'll See you later. <laughs> all right. All right, folks. That's the show. Thank you for coming on and staying with me for this uh for this off night, uh, it, it is a little different me doing a Thursday night compared to my normal Monday nights. But Monday, I do have a show on. And like normal, I do not n remember the name of my guest because I just don't have that memory. Um, but I will have an, oh, I have on R.L. Foster on uh, September 11th uh, on Monday. She, uh, I actually started watching her because she does a lot of um, medical readings. Uh, and tries helping people out um, with what's going on in them and everything else. But she does so much more than that. Look for an advertisement for her coming out. I will put it out either Friday or Saturday, uh, announcing who she is. It will be on 7 p.m. Central, Monday nights, as it normally is. And other than that, have a great week. Uh, again, thank you to all the guests who were on. Uh, they were fantastic. They were just full of knowledge. And I really appreciate them all coming on. And I wish them the best of luck at the Phantasm Orlando. Again, if you're able to get out there, go out, enjoy it. It'll be a lot of fun. Other than that, have a great weekend. Um, thank you again for participating. You all know you're my family. And I will talk to you again.